Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about some example problems for kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and mechanical energy. So looking at some general information, GPE is the abbreviation for gravitational potential energy. Uh, the formula is GPE equals WH. W is weight, H is height. Now, uh, one thing I want to throw out here is that that is not the only form of potential energy that we're going to uh, know about. Um, elastic potential energy also exists, but we're not going to use a formula for that because that is for later on in your education. Um, I will say that you can also use GPE equals MGH, and the reason that this formula works is because mass times gravity is the same thing as weight. This is the formula for the potential energy of elasticity, such as in a slingshot, but again, uh, we're not going to be applying that during this school year. Kinetic energy, the formula is Ke, or kinetic energy, equals one half mass velocity squared. So remember, you're multiplying four things together. 0.5, or one half, mass, velocity, velocity. So here's an example problem. What is the GPE of a two kilogram block five meters above the floor? I'm going to write the formula down. You have two choices. GPE equals WH or GPE equals mass, gravity, height. Take a moment, pause the video, and try to solve that problem. Okay, taking a moment to look at what we have here. We have the mass, and I can simply apply this formula, MGH, all right? So what I can do is I can say, okay, so my mass is two kilograms. Gravity is about 10 meters per second squared. And then my height is five. So looking at two times 10, that's going to be 20. 20 times 5 is going to be 100 joules. Now remember, I'm estimating this value. I'm not using the precise number of 9.8. Therefore, this is not a precise answer, but is very close to the actual answer. Let's look at another example. What is the GPE of a 3 kilogram ball that is 2 meters above the floor? So take a moment to read that question try to solve it, and then we will talk about the solution. Again, we do not have the weight, so we have to use mass, gravity, height. Here, I want to do something a little bit different. What I want to do is I want to actually use 9.8 instead of using 10 so that you can see the difference of what would happen there. So, we have mass, which is 3 kilograms, gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. I could have used 10, but I want to be precise here, just to show you. And then it's 2 meters above the floor. So that's 2 meters. All right? So when I multiply 3 times 9.8 using my calculator, I get 29, so this is 29.4 and that's going to be multiplied by 2 meters. Alright, so 29.4 times 2 gives me 58.8. So 29.4 times 2 is going to equal 58.8 joules. Okay? Another example. Number 3. Brandon throws a four kilogram stone straight up and it reaches a height of five meters. What is the GPE at its highest point? All right, so let's take a moment to try that one and then uh, we will go over the answer together. Now, this is another one that's going to be using GPE, so I'm going to leave the formula right here. GPE is what it's asking for. 
So Brandon throws a four kilogram stone. So the mass is going to be four kilograms. For gravity, I'm going to use 10. And then for height, I'm going to use five meters. Now I should have written meters per second squared here because this is acceleration. But let's just go ahead and let's find what the number would be. Uh, four times 10 is 40. 40 times five is going to give you a total of 200. So we have 200 joules, or an approximately 200 joules, because I rounded that to 10, and that is my answer for that question. Let's look at number four. How high do you have to lift a five kilogram box to give it, a, to give it 98 joules of GPE? So here, you're gonna to have to work a little bit differently because I'm giving you the energy I'm giving you the mass, but what I don't give you is the height. So let's look at using this formula and replacing some of those variables with what we know. So we know that we have, so let me just write the formula out over here. We know that we have five kilograms, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to five kilograms. We know that the height, we know that the energy is 98 joules. We know that, uh, yeah, that's all we know. But we do know gravity. And we're going to say gravity is 9.8. Let's just take a moment to be precise today. So 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so 5 times 9.8 times height equals 98. So let's simplify everything. We're going to go ahead and multiply 5 times 9.8 and see what we get for that. So 5 times 9.8 is going to give me 49. So 49 times height equals 98 joules. So now I need to isolate the variable, and to do that I'm going to divide both sides by 49. Those cancel out, and then 98... 98 divided by 49 is going to give me 2. So here, H equals 2. Remember we're using SI units, so 2 is going to be 2 meters. So the height must be 2 meters in order to uh, have that much energy. All right, number 5, a very similar question. How high do you have to lift a 1 kilogram ball to give it 49 joules of gravitational potential energy? So let me erase what I have written right here, and I'm going to set this up in my formula. This is the same formula we're going to use, okay, and let's use the precise number for gravity. Uh, so we have um, 49 joules is our amount of energy. We have one kilogram. Ones are usually very easy to work with. Um, we have our gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and then we have height. We don't know what that is. That's the variable we're trying to find. So we can simplify this very easily. 1 times 9.8 is 9.8. So 9.8 times height equals 49 joules. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 9.8. And when I do that, I get 49 divided by 9.8 gives me 5. So 5 equals... H. Remember that's 5 meters because we are using SI units. All right, number six. What is the kinetic energy of a 4 kilogram bird flying at a speed of 3 meters per second? Let's look at how we would solve that. So looking up here, now that we're using kinetic energy, Kinetic energy, as you recall, is one-half mass velocity squared. So here, we're going to go ahead and replace those variables with what we know. Um, so another way to write that is Ke equals 0.5, that's one-half, mass, velocity, velocity. So you're multiplying four things together. So these numbers right here, just before I write anything down, I want to make sure that everything's in SI units. I have kilograms and I have meters per second. That's very important. Before you do that, make sure you don't have to convert. So, uh, I'm changing this to four kilograms. 
and I'm changing my speed or my velocity right here. I'm going to change that to 3. All right, so now I have 0.5 times 4 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 half times 4 is 2. And 2 times 9 is 18 joules. So my answer here is 18 joules. Number 7. What is the kinetic energy of a 9 kilogram object moving at a speed of 2 meters per second? Very similar question using the same formula. I'm going to go ahead and erase what I have written on the board. Okay, so I'm going to set it up as this. I'm going to say 0 0.5 times mass times velocity times velocity. So my velocity is 2, so I can go ahead and replace that with a 2. My mass is 9 kilograms. And now I can multiply all this together and then simplify. So 2 times 2 is... 4, and then 0.5 times 9 is going to be 4.5. So now I have 4.5 times 4. So looking at that on the calculator, and if you can do it in your head, just use a calculator to check to be sure. I get 18. So my answer here is going to be 18 joules. Let's try one more. Uh, which has more kinetic energy, a 3 kilogram mass moving at a velocity of 2 meters per second or a 2 kilogram mass moving at 3 meters per second? To solve this, what I want you to do is find the kinetic energy of this and then find the kinetic energy of this and compare the two together. Um, and we will check our answer in part two. Thank you.